So about five years ago, I had this experience in not too far from here, a couple hours in the, in the redwood forest. It was in a deep meditative state overnight. And it was a full moon night with fog going through the redwood forest, mm. this misty, cold, the smell of the redwoods. Mm. Does that make it? Yeah. Oh, yum. <laughs> so it's just like, and there's a fire going on and I'm, and I'm suddenly having this experience of just like a completely different presence around me. And, and like when I close my eyes, I would see different types of blue lights around me. And I'm thinking, wow, I don't know what's going on here. But I started like in my ear, I hear no more birds or insects. Like it's all dampened as if I'm like in a soundproof room. Mm -hmm. And I start to hear this voice of these light beings talk to me. And they say, you know, you've finally come to a place where we can work with you. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Super excited to be talking about alignment within. We have Asil Toxel joining us on the show. Hi, Asil. Hi, Alan. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for this show. <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know Asil's background, he is a channel and healer focused on the evolution of consciousness in humanity. And you can find his links in the bio below, asiltoxel.com, as well as the Facebook profile. I'm super grateful to Samantha Stein for helping nudge us to make this happen. Indeed. Let's start things off with one of our favorite questions to ask our guests. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Hmm. Well, it's definitely a very interesting time to be alive. And uh, one could say this at all the times that humanity was alive. But from my current perspective, <laughs> it's, it's a wild ride. Um, I have, I see extreme polarities. Um, I see uh, the full spectrum of extremes that we're having from uh, wealth to poverty, from awareness to ignorance, uh, from healthy to unhealthy, from technology to non-technology. So we have so many extremes that maybe we've never had in human history before. And at the same time, we are more connected than we have ever been. And so everything is much easier and quicker accessible than it has ever been, in person or digitally. So despite all these things that we have, we are doing great things and we're doing not so great things. There's a lot of struggle and challenges happening. And I may argue that those struggles all root from a misalignment within. Mm. Yes. <sighs> that first principle of know thyself and have that divine connection to source, spirit, God, all that is, mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. That's the first principled issue. Right. Any misalignments there have every second order, third order issue happen afterward. Yes. And that's the way I see it. And my experience has been the outside influences and the circumstances were always an easy scapegoat for me to blame what's happening to me. Always considering, oh, I am the victim of my upbringing. I'm the victim of, of, of my education. I'm the victim of the society. I'm the victim of the system. I'm the victim of all these things, like of my heritage. I'm the victim of my past lives. I'm the victim of my karma. 
And eventually I thought, well, I can't continue living life by blaming everything around me and trying to escape from everything around me because there is no escaping. And eventually I started to realize, all right, well, let me see how much of it is really outside and how much of it is really inside. And it really just resonates in a certain way that it becomes really visible to me directly in front of me. So assuming that all the things that are happening to me are a mirror reflection of what's happening inside already. Mm -hmm. And with that um, just very basic realization I had, I've gone on a journey of self-discovery, of um, self-realization, really diving deeper and deeper and deeper inwards and trying to see where, how am I creating the reality that's around me and how are we as a collective creating the reality that we currently have? I love this mirror. It's a very important point. And the essence being that what we see in our perspective is mirror is a mirror of what's happening within yes so on an individual level definitely true but also collect on a collective level definitely true so the shadows or the misalignments or the challenges that we have internally and one could say also karma that we have requires to be digested processed in some form and turned into a realization or a piece of wisdom and that's a process that takes some time it's a digestive process and that process happens internally but it also happens as a collective consciousness because we are not necessarily separate. We're having individualized experiences, but we're part of the same field of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so it is my responsibility to also be part of your realization. Mm. And it is my responsibility to be part of the collective's realization. Mm -hmm. But I believe that my highest leverage point of assisting with all of that is this one, right? Yes. Might take a lot of time to change someone else. Maybe it's impossible, one might say. And internally, it might be difficult, but it feels the, like the highest leverage point of action. Yes. I want to know how we digest karma. Mm. What does that mean and how do we do that? <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I think before we even get into various terms that require, you know, big definitions and, you know, there's different definitions and different lineages and religions and so on. If we just look inside, and see all the ways that our mind operates, our heart, our emotions operate, and our system, our physical body operates. And then there is also the operations of spirit and soul. We can see that some things are just not going the way it should be. Something feels off, slightly off. Something might feel off in interaction with other people or something might trigger me in a certain way. In all various ways these systems speak to us, right? So there is like the inner chatter that speaks to me, the emotions speak to me, my body speaks to me when I listen to it, right? And when it's really quiet our own spirit, our own consciousness speaks to us as well. Mm. 
So first step is really to understanding what are all my parts saying? What is that voice that's coming from different places? So the first step is to read this user's manual of the body. Yeah, or more like life. a status quo, a check-in, an internal check-in. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What does an internal check-in look like? Yeah. Yes, yes. And it may not be pretty in the beginning. Mm. Mm. And anyone who's gone on this journey knows it can be messy, it can be tough, it can be um, very raw and vulnerable. But I do believe it's very important for every individual to have that internal look and to start there. Yes. You, I love this, this internal check and we spend so much of our lives on focused on the external world. Mm -hmm. And so I love this, this like internal check-in and we check in for our vehicle gets the oil changes and all this type mm -hmm. of stuff gets checked in all the time. Yeah. Uh, but to treat ourselves like someone that we are responsible for taking care of is a good way to view it as well. So, okay, so this internal check-in, there's this, there's this mind, there's this heart, there's this gut, there's the spirit or the soul, mm -hmm. you know, so what are these parts when we do this check-in? What are, how do we check into these parts? Mm -hmm. I think there is an aspect that requires a silence, some sort of silence comp contemplation. Mm -hmm. And the first and most dominant aspect of our being is currently our mind. Just because it's the structures that we have established require our minds to be very active. So it is the one that has kind of taken the driver's seat, which means in the beginning when we start to sit, it's gonna be the one that's the loudest, mm. right? And then there are certain phases where the emotions or the heart is the loudest. It's like something happens in a relationship that just brings up a certain type of emotion mm. or a certain emotion is uh, suppressed for so long that it explodes in the right trigger. Mm. And then the body, right? We work out, we try to take care of it in a certain way, but sometimes we ignore it mm. and that will start speaking. Mm. And it requires that moment of silence to really hear all of it. Um, and when it's really silent, once the mind and the emotions and the body are becoming into a place of, you know, quieting down while you're still conscious and awake. Mm -hmm there is an aspect of the soul that starts to speak. And that may take some time for some people and, and for some it goes quickly. But ultimately that check-in is, what are the thoughts and emotions that are currently going through my system? What are the basic needs that are unmet? What are the deeper underlying needs that are unmet? Maybe needs from childhood, and then sometimes there are aspects of our being that we can't even explain why they're part of this lifetime. So we may start to inquire, is there some sort of even older need that was not met? Or an older situation, let's say of past lives. Or one could say it's an aspect of the collective that we individually start to tap into that comes to us for processing, right? Because we're available and we can do it. So this is what I would say. Now, I don't think we need to fix these things immediately just because we're listening to it. Mm. I think observation is the first and most important step. Interesting just to gain awareness as an observer. Correct. And then we will start to observe the same thing in many different perspectives, not just from the perspective of the wounded or the you that identifies as you. 
you start to see it from other places and other angles and many many different perspectives and observations start to digest what has happened mm. Mm. or what is happening currently so that's one of the ways of deepening that understanding of the self and the different ha aspects that we have okay so for this inward check-in we aim to become more of an observer and we notice likely our mind is the loudest and it is attempting to remind us of this appointment that we have or this uh, task to execute that we must do this person to reply to and the more that we work on just bringing it back to just trying to check in maybe inward and mm -hmm. just being aware that the mind is racing to all of these other things being more aware that it's just racing to those and being aware of the the heart in how it can uh, call up an emotion so uh, suddenly with a, maybe a trigger mm -hmm. how the physical body uh, will speak when it's uh, not being properly taken care of mm -hmm. okay and then in once we get we're checking into those and we're quieting this inner chatter a little bit then we may have an opening for this soul spirit this higher self correct and the higher self is doing what is it doing with you what mm -hmm. is it doing with other people that you've worked with mm -hmm. what is that how does that come in I think it first for me it would bring underlying needs of my spirit of my soul that wanted to be digested processed and this was more than just emotions it was deep and old relationships or it was what are like deep longings that I have that I can't really explain and I would start to listen and start to follow that without necessarily questioning or judging how silly it is or what might other people think and so on so just to follow that for a bit and see what comes up mm. so it's a journey like listening to that higher self and it may first require to do a couple of steps of surrendering to it and really listening deeply and I think eventually we come to a place where there is a certain equilibrium of all the different parts they know they're being listened to so mm. they behave more <laughs> mm -hmm. and so the heart is more settled the mind is more settled it doesn't require to be a dominant figure in this round table mm -hmm. the body knows it's being taken care of and the soul or the higher self knows it's being listened to so we start to walk life in a different way mm. and I can guarantee you people around you will feel the difference you will feel the difference mm -hmm. this way that we walk and behave and act when this settled alignment has occurred um, makes it so that yes friends family co-workers people online are more are seeing some sort of a transformation occurring mm -hmm. and then there's a, maybe there's even more of an alignment towards our our most uh, highest gifts that we can bring into the world mm -hmm and then it seems like we're more connected with that North Star and those gifts mm -hmm. so I always like to use the analogy of a garden and in some ways I believe this 
internal alignment is setting up a really nice fertile soil. Mm -hmm. So you're tending the weed, you're making sure your soil is loose, has oxygen, has nutrients, has water, everything it needs. And that soil will eventually start sprouting things that you don't even know what it's gonna be. And this is what I perceive as the gift or maybe a or many purposes, life purposes that are yeah. coming up. And they will come naturally based on that, how well that soil has been tended. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not really, in, in, in my perspective, it is not really trying to find, oh, I want to find my life purpose, now give it to me. Without that groundwork, I think it's just another thing that we follow. Mm. So I remind myself, if there is something that I'm doing that does not feel aligned from all my parts, have I tended to the groundwork? Have I tended the soil properly so that this can grow? And if it's not growing, there's something wrong with the soil. Does that make sense? Yes. Alignment within makes the soil conditions optimal for the seeds of the gifts. Correct. To grow. Correct. Now, of course, with every soil, there is also the environment, right? So the earth provides an environment uh, which can be a difficult environment sometimes to grow anything. And sometimes we'll, we may have to uh, find other spaces where our soil is much more suitable for growing our gifts. Metaphor still working? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it may require sometimes to change location or perspective or mm. a place where this baseline that I have is much better fitting. Certain types of flowers and plants grow only in certain parts of the world. Mm. Yes, I like that one. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's good. Hmm. As we align more within, we then r realize that we may need a l locational shift around the world to a location where the gifts can come forth. And it might not be just location, it could be circumstances. Oh, people in our friend Correct. group and network. It could so be community, important. it could be a tribe, relationships, mm. it could be lifestyle, mm. right? Mm. All the habits and behaviors that I've created for myself, for a being that was operating beforehand in order to achieve specific goals. Yeah. But now if the goal is to achieve an equilibrium or a fertile soil, so to say, of your being, what does that require? What do I need? And really you're the only one that can say. I can give you a couple of tips of healthy living, and many people do, but ultimately it must sit within what's right for you. I like this as the consciousness becomes transformed and ascends that these behavior patterns and maybe some of the old uh, soil that used to be there that was maybe focused more on ego or material or all mm -hmm. these other things uh, we we do need, we repattern our habits we lay new soil in a sense mm -hmm. and so to to change those friend groups to change those locations and those habits and the new ways of seeing maybe even dematerializing and these mm -hmm. types of, of things can can help that alignment really rocket upward mm -hmm. absolutely 
And I do believe some of these relationship changes or environmental changes around you don't need to be like conscious changes, they happen to you. The moment you start changing the soil, almost your environment starts changing. Yes. Um, and many people that have gone through transformational experiences will, will be able to confirm that, how relationships just started to fall off, or new relationships started to come into their lives, or certain habits that they used to have don't really have that same pull or the same energy anymore. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's how you know you're in a transformational journey. Yeah. What, but the observation is so important that then uh, if the ha habit is no longer serving your transformation, to be very aware of that observation is so mm -hmm. important because that's mm -hmm. what assists us with that repatterning of the habits. Yes. How many times... I wonder, because I look at my life and I used to be this hardworking, you know, entrepreneur, executive, really trying to achieve uh, all the things that society has told me, um, my parents have told me, education has told me, and the structures that we have created have told me, like, this is achievement, this is success. If you do this, you're going to be good. And how many times have I really checked internally? Is this really what I want? Mm. And does this really feel right? Or am I just being sold on a dream? Right? Mm -hmm. And upon a couple of these achievements, I would wonder, why do I still feel unhappy mm -hmm. in the face of achievement and success? Yeah. According to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I started to question things and doubt things. Like, maybe there's something here that I don't know and see. I'm going to start asking my own questions. And that's an interesting point. Yeah. Because it can be a very depressing point, right? Who do yeah. you start, who do you believe? Mm. And who don't you believe? And it could be a disillusioning moment of all those people that I've trusted don't know mm. what I need to be happy. So that's another one of those awakening moments. From birth, the indoctrination of the parental teachings, the education system, the government, the, the nation that you're in, the media, propaganda, it's all influencing the, the seed of the child as it's being brought into the world. And when, did, when were we ever, ever taught about the check-in, mm. in? Mm -hmm. Are these things aligned? Check in. Are, any, are these things aligned? Mm -hmm. And it's so important to have a trusted, at least one person, mm -hmm. trusted person, because parents are going to have their own influence. Mm -hmm. You know, certain friends, you know, if you got to be careful. If you say good news to your friend, are they really genuinely loving? And, and yes, the pie is growing. You're growing. I love it. Or are they, you know, secretly wishing bad mm -hmm. and so or same thing with who you tell bad news to are they wanting to genuinely empathize and help you grow and transform or are they um, secretly yes so the, who is this this friend that you can potentially have with you or multiple friends that can help the in the check in and ha have that dialogue between for the check-in how is that check-in process going where are you feeling it? How is the mm. higher self coming into play? You know, all these questions to have at least a one or a couple people that are trusted there is going to be crucial for that soil to become more fertile to have the gifts come forth. Sure. I think an externalized um, representation of that internal check-in can be very helpful. Community, 
um, a highly aware individual, partner, family member, friend. And this doesn't have to be a lifelong thing. It could be a momentary thing. It could be just one conversation in the bus. Mm -hmm. It could be a mentor that oversees your growth for a period of time. Yeah. It could be that one line that you read in a book that's mm -hmm. putting that up for check-in, right? Mm -hmm. Check in with yourself, like what's going on there? And so I believe that there is, once you go on this journey, you will have a lot of helpers, a lot of support. It's support everywhere, even if that is the walk down the street into the park. Nature will support you. Mm -hmm. It will reflect to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So there are so many ways we can receive reflection. Again, a mirror in a positive way. Right? And assistance and support of our growth. Yes. It's, that's, that's great that, that even a, on a journey into nature that we could uh, as we are aligning more within that we can see the hummingbird go for a little bit of nectar and then we're like ah ah you know <laughs> and so there's all different the little dragonfly whizzes by the little squirrel jumps from a branch to another branch and the sunlight shines just this beautiful way through some mm. trees and it's just there's so many ways that nature speaks to us along the path as well. I love how you talk about the support system. So if, you, if we begin the process of aligning within, the support systems come in too. And also, a good example of this, I think so many of us are so familiar with this example, but perspective being everything, you can be in the vehicle driving and get just road rage or on this aligned within path, when we nurture that, when we're driving, we can say, oh, maybe the person is in an emergency to the hospital. Mm -hmm. All these different potentials could mm -hmm. be the case. Mm -hmm. And so the same scenario, completely different mm -hmm. perspective and experience. Very well said, very well said. So. Healthy support systems are maybe required as we're still operating in, in automatic behaviors and patterns, right? If you know there are certain aspects that are driving your being, then I put some things into place and I say, you are one of my closest people and I empower you to reflect following things to me. When I'm out of line, when I'm out of integrity, I want you to support me, no matter how hard it is for me to hear it. Yes. So, who are you in your life empowering you to be clear and clean mirrors? Yeah. Right. So, this is also, a lot of that is... Nature is always a clean mirror? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Nature is maybe the cleanest mirror, mm -hmm. as long as we take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. So quiet in nature is an incredibly powerful mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's venture into this journey for you. Yes. So um, being born in Vienna mm -hmm. in Austria and um, two Turkish immigrant parents mm -hmm. and when did this young Asil end up getting interested in this spiritual path and mm -hmm. and then it's been 18 years of this path now mm -hmm. and five years ago was a very important moment for correct me. so let's take us through that sure so i was always a little different mm -hmm. now a lot of uh, probably our viewers are having that same experience. <laughs> I was always a little different, right? <laughs> Just a little. Um, and so being a, you know, trying to be put into certain boxes that society has created works, you know. Um, 
until it doesn't work anymore. Mm. So I have, um, because of the, of my upbringing, I have taken on a certain identity and a certain personality, and I have explored, you know, higher education in so many different ways, entrepreneurialism and so on, excelling in those different aspects. But it would never give me this level of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And I thought fulfillment or what the general term happiness is, even that's not the emotion I'm talking about, I'm talking about a sense of feeling holistic or whole, mm. it wouldn't come from these achievements. They would only give temporary relief, right? And so for me, the journey was really, I need to find all the ways where I'm trying to fill holes in my system with things outside. Yeah, yeah. You know that one? <laughs> <laughs> right. So they would give temporary relief and then you would look for the next sparkly thing to fill that or the next relationship to fill it. And so I started to look more into how am I going to be able to fill these holes long term and sustainably? Maybe not forever, but long enough so that next time when I look into it, it's not like a gushing wound. And as I've been with this curiosity it started of, you know, the mystical path and the spiritual path. And I would start to look into the, all these different lineages that had, and the different uh, societies that had these aspects ingrained in religious or non-religious context. So my curiosity was very strong and I was not brought up in any ways uh, in a religious uh, environment, rather very liberal and very, you know, open to modernism. Hence why I'm an engineer and scientist, right? <laughs> By education. And so the curiosity of spirituality was very high. The curiosity for the unknown was very high. So I started to seek out all these, you know, different methodologies. It started off with meditation and looking into the mystical path and I started to venture out further and further and the furthest I could go uh, to shamans or to masters in Southeast Asia or in Asia, Far East Asia uh, and to teachers and shamanic uh, mentors in the Americas and South America and so I would just go as deep as I, they were willing to take me. Mm. There was an aspect of, I am scared shitless, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Because I want to find out the answers, not by you telling me the story of where the answer is, but I want to experience it. Experientially. Correct. Yes. Because I'm a hard head, right? I can rationalize everything away. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can rationalize everything away. <laughs> The engineer and scientist. Exactly. <laughs> so for me to be truly embodying and embracing a certain truth, I have to experience it internally. It has to move something inside of me. And so I've been going all to deeper and deeper and deeper into some of these different lineages. I started in Taoism and Buddhism and, and shamanism and in also modern psychological ways of transformation. Yes. Even just those off the bat, I mean, so important to study. Mm -hmm. We have so much hubris in this, especially this newly formed Western world where we just believe that the stimulation we're getting from the media that we consume on the platforms is this most important content. When the most important content is really had the, is, experiencing the Lindy effect. It's, it was made thousands of years ago, and why is it still here? Because mm. it's that important. Mm -hmm. And that's Taoism, Buddhism, um, uh, shamanism. Mm -hmm. uh, even, like you said, even the modern psychologies have a lot to do with 
this as well understanding neural signatures understanding yeah. the vagus nerve there's all different types of things that we've only more recently the emf of the heart all this kind of crazy stuff so yes please um continue taking mm -hmm. us through your journey and lineages i'm just so happy that you did <laughs> this you did like a a la carte buffet of uh oh yeah of the most important stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and i would work with it until i felt I've gotten a really good gem from this. And I can bow in gratitude and I can move on. Um, and I can seek to have a different perspective on what's going on inside of me. So the journey kept going. And at some point, I was still, I was still running companies at that point. So it was a parallel track of spiritual exploration and mystical exploration. And, you know, doing the things that society wants us to do, like running a company, having employees, having clients, all that jazz, right? And I came to a crossroad where one path was giving me excitement, curiosity, awe, some pain, but ultimately an aspect of fulfillment. There was always forward movement. I felt like... I'm, I'm growing. On the other side, I was successful and I was being perceived as very good in what I do. Mm -hmm. But it was not giving me the level of sensation of fulfillment and growth and the sense of that what I'm doing is actually making a difference in my own world and also in the general collective. Some of your spiritual practices were coming into the entrepreneurial uh, and they were making you more successful. Sure, absolutely. But the most fulfilling for you was shining the star of the spirituality and then having that also shine into other people's stars become emerged themselves. Yes. So what would happen is every time I would just go through a milestone, I would be like, wow, there is an expansion that's happening inside of me. And sometimes I would try to impose it on other people. Right? I would like, oh, you have to do this and you have to do this. <laughs> this is amazing. And of course, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Uh, but ultimately, I started to realize even just alone me internally carrying this expansion and this opening is making a difference in the people around me. They act and react differently. Mm -hmm. My relationship to my parents transformed my relationships in general transformed. So yes. my relationship to myself transformed. Yes. Even most importantly, right? Self-perception. So I started to understand, okay, I'm getting to a point where I have to make a decision. And if I don't, one side is going to try to continuously compensate for the other side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the spiritual side giving me energy and uplifting and continuation of growth. The other side feeling like, what the hell am I doing here? Spinning my wheels. So I chose instead of a path of pain and depression <laughs> to just jump off the cliff. And... And that's a key moment that many people will experience where the unknown and the uncertain and the potential change that we're about to embark on might, it will take you on a ride and it may not be easy. Your parents are going to ask you if you're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Your community is going to potentially laugh at you mm -hmm. and be like, Dude, what are you doing? And I'm just speaking out like the worst case scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. And you may not make as much money as you did before. And you may be struggling for a while. You may be in discomfort for a while. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. So this continuous work will... You know, when you are preparing your garden, 
there is nothing in the beginning. All you're doing is weeding and preparing the soil. Mm. There is no fruits, there is nothing to eat. <laughs> you're just watching soil, right? You're nourishing the soil. Yeah. But there is a belief and there is a trust that eventually something will come out of this. Mm. If I started to get better at every step of the moment, it can only result in something monumental and beautiful for me and through me for all those around me. Yes. Take us to this experience five yeah. years ago. Okay. So about five years ago, I had this experience and not too far from here, a couple hours in the, in the Redwood Forest. It was in a deep meditative state overnight and it was a full moon night with fog going through the redwood forest, mm. this misty, cold, the smell of the redwoods. Mm. Does that make it? Yeah. Oh, yum. <laughs> so it's just like, and there's a fire going on and I'm, and I'm suddenly having this experience of just like a completely different presence around me. And, and like when I close my eyes, I would see different types of blue lights around me. And I'm thinking, wow, I don't know what's going on here. But I started like in my ear, I hear no more birds or insects. Like it's all dampened as if I'm like in a soundproof room. And I start to hear this voice of these light beings talk to me. And they say, you know, you've finally come to a place where we can work with you. Mm. And I'm thinking, oh boy, I think I'm just now about to lose my shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe this was a little too much transformation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm... I'm amusing myself with the thought of something is going on here that I can't explain and I'm gonna follow that path. So they're basically saying at that point I've been already working for several years as, um, as a shamanic guide, as a healer in different methodologies. And they're basically saying I have to let go of all the different lineages that I have learned that have brought me to where I am. Mm and they will work and prepare me to do their work. Mm -hmm. So as a vessel for their work. Yes. And at that point, I don't even know what their work is. Mm -hmm. All I know is like these reverent bright lights that are with me that have such a presence, such a high frequency. Even like in my ear, I would hear this high pitched sound. And I say, okay, well, let me think about it, right? So I think about it for a bit. And eventually I'm terrified, but I surrender to it. And I go on this journey with these light beings. And on this first date that I have with them. That, the same, eve, that same in the... In the redwoods? No, no. this was a... Okay. So I, I took a couple months to think about okay. it. Okay. The invitation <laughs> was... That, that yes, okay. that was the opening moment okay. where um, it was clear something is going on in my field. Like there is something sprouting off my garden. Mm -hmm. This isn't, I didn't plan this, right? Mm -hmm. All I prepared was the soil and now something is coming off. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know what it is. You know, when a sprout comes off, you don't even know no, which plant, plant it's going to be. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm here and I'm thinking, okay, well, this is going to be interesting. Definitely a turn of events. And you accept and you go on this date several months later. And you weren't expecting this date either. It well, I kind of knew that when I'm ready, they'll be there. Okay. So I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. What do we have to do? So I went on to some really deep states of uh, 
you know, trance states in which I started to connect with them closer and closer. Mm. And the first one that introduced himself said, greetings, my name is Emmanuel. And I thought, Emmanuel, maybe the name of a dead person, like a, you know, a saint or something like that. And I said, is it Manuel? And I said, no, it's Emmanuel. I'm like, okay. After that, I go on Google, I look for Emmanuel, and it says there is an angel called Emmanuel. And I'm thinking, okay, now I'm really losing my mind. You know, like talking to angels, like there's no way my parents are gonna be accepting that. And my friends are definitely gonna declare me crazy, <laughs> right? So I'm this in this internal conversation, I'm like, I can't talk to anyone about this. <laughs> this. This has to stay a secret until I am comfortable yeah. being able to talk about it. So, and maybe I'm thinking, maybe it's a phase, it'll go away. So I keep on going and there is many more of these dates and connections and sessions. And they keep on working on my energetic system and they keep on revealing more and more of what their work is on this plane for humanity. And it turns out that they have a grand plan of assisting humanity through its evolution. The evolution of its consciousness. Now, they're saying, we're not here to fix your problems. That's still going to be yours. But we're here to allow you to get to states where you can see more perspectives, where you can get to know yourself better. Mm. And with that internal connection, mm -hmm. internal alignment, all of your actions will start to look differently. And you can more easily tackle these grand challenges. Correct. So the, there was an opening up of the catalog of, of consciousness states and possibilities and transformative processes. Mm -hmm. And then y you going through the process of experiencing those and then sharing those with other people would uplift consciousness and challenge or tackle those big challenges so in some ways they have their own method of doing that which is why they're utilizing me as a vessel for their work mm -hmm. right and and you wonder if there's possibly others being utilized for for sure uh, for light but also for dark absolutely there is no doubt about it there is uh, all colors of the spectrum and all shades of gray exist on our plane, without a doubt. Okay, we can get into that in a little bit. Yes. Continue. So, in, in, in the work that they have been doing, it's like, how can... Because there is a lot of individuals that deliver messages, right? Even from like higher planes and high different forms of consciousness, spirits, deities, ascended masters, there's a lot of that going on. Now, delivering a message is not necessarily the biggest of what they can do. They're saying, we're going to deliver some sort of energetic transmission and we're going to provide some sort of alignment for all those before we even speak so that the message can land in a way that it's gonna make a change and an impact in your life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we just sit here, okay, maybe you're already a bit in an altered state and I'm too, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so messages are coming along differently mm -hmm. now. But if we were just in a coffee shop, just regularly chatting and I tell you, hey, you know, like, We've got to do all these amazing things about ourselves and out of the world. Five minutes later, you're already on your tasks and like the things that you have to do mm -hmm. for the day. And out the door is the idea that you needed to go to the gym, take care of your body and, you know, do meditation and take care of all your relationships, right? So when that type of work happens, when these energies work through me, the way they induce some sort of an altered state in the space 
what is what makes it possible for these messages to actually land on a much mm. deeper level mm -hmm. in the human consciousness or human psyche so that it, it starts to make a change. Yes. And what were these dates that you went on? How, what were these experiences like with Emmanuel? And, yeah. and what were you getting downloaded? Yeah. And yes. It's... Um, a lot of it was incredibly physical and physically intense. So I would say that in the human body, there is an energetic template. There is, there are powers way beyond our imagination that lies into one single human being. And they were starting to activate these templates. They were working on various different energy channels. They were making sure that all my organs and energy lines are working optimally so that I can become that vessel to not just transmit the energy that comes, but also collect and compress yeah. and just provide that yeah. for the space that's around me. Yes. And so in these sessions, I'll go into incredibly fast breathing and shaking and it just looks wild. Yeah. Like my eyes will roll upwards and it's, it's a very intense thing even to just watch. It's intense for me, or now I'm getting used to it. But there is an aspect of ramping up the energy to the point where I'm in this complete trance state. And, and then I feel like one of them basically taking over my body and they're like going into different mudras and they start to like look around and scan every individual like what's going on it, and I could see like from their perspective everything from like the outer fields all the way to the body and the solids and the organs and even like to the DNA and ancestry it just becomes everything becomes so transparent wow yes <laughs> and then they start to work on all of these various aspects of the individuals now, what's interesting is they operate in an incredibly high integrity way, meaning they won't work on anyone that does not want to be worked on, period. Even if someone is struggling tremendously in their lives, if they don't want to be worked on, they will never be worked on. It's their free will to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. They will only work as much as the individual can take at that point without destabilizing their life, mm -hmm. right? How many destabilizing transformational experiences have you had? I've had quite a few. Mm -hmm. Like I've been in bed or in my room for weeks to just digest what just happened. Now, it's not the experience that they want to give to the participants. It needs to be able to move them, but they need to still be able to be functional in their lives and their careers and so on. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's a bit of a gentle approach, but yes. still effective. Yes. So that's what they're trying to do. And with this alignment, people go into, people that have never meditated before, they're like, wow, I was in this zone, I've had these visions, I've had these voices, uh, you know, people have very interesting reports on what they have experienced in these sessions. And then there is the spoken part where they share aspects of wisdom. A lot of it is very simple, very almost like a bird's eye view, non-dual mm. wisdom. Mm. At the same time, compassionate about whatever we're going through and they'll speak about the state of affairs. <laughs> to look back and see how over thousands of years there have been so many 
experiences of ritual or ceremony um, of trance of seance of so many ways of connecting to what is spiritual or mystical or beyond the physical reality that once we open ourselves up more to all of that lineage that's been happening um, we no longer just binary label things as like psychosis or uh, neurosis or psychopathy or whatever mm -hmm. rather we open ourselves up more to the possibility that these are actually potentially divine rituals and codes that have significant uh participation of our own alignment within and also of our society's uh, alignment and so when you talk about when you talk about your vessel being able to have light that channels through it to see other people's organs DNA life journeys ancestors childhoods all these different aspects of them I think that awakens us to the sheer complexity of every single one of us that is present and how it's not just this it's not just limited to the word uh, sonder where it's that our lives have different complexities with families and friends and co-workers and careers and all this type of stuff but it's deeper. What is the heart state, the brain state, the DNA state, the gut state, the lineage, the ancestry lineage, the childhood experiences, all these things. Mm -hmm. And the divine purpose of that being, right, all of those things. And to be able to see those things and, and be a source of further by working on our own alignment, our own garden, helping others work on their alignment and their yeah. gardens. So then, with these, you have an upcoming workshop mm -hmm. on the 15th yes. of September in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So tell us about then what happens at the workshops. Mm -hmm. How is that related to what we were talking about with Emmanuel and all these other light beings that come yeah. through? Yeah. So in a session that's between two to three hours in its length, um, I will go into a trance and in this how do you get yourself into a trance? it's very much connected like I, I, I sit and close my eyes and then it just starts automatically like it's so integrated almost like they know and now it's session time and it just starts and it starts with contractions in my lower belly and these contractions like trigger like fast breathing yeah. and then there is like circular movements of my spine. It's like, you know, like waves coming through. And, and then I start to, you know, feel more and more in an altered state. And eventually the energy will have built up so much and my energetic state is in a place where they can embody me. And they control um, all my upper body. So all my gestures and you know where I look and how I move mm. is controlled by the energy that's embodying me. And sometimes that's Raphael, sometimes it's uh, Emmanuel or Mikael and so on. And so when that happens, I am a bit of an observer, like I'm far away. Sometimes I don't even remember what's going on or what is being said. I remember about half of it. So they will establish not just my own energetic system, but also the energetic system of the space. It has to be a safe space to do healing and alignment, right? So just like the surgery room has to be hermetically sealed and clean. Mm -hmm. And so that is being done. Now the individuals can sit or lie down. It's perfectly fine either way. Some people will even, you know, fade out, fade away, go into their own version of a trance state or meditative state. Some people will fall asleep. Uh, we make sure they don't snore. 
but ultimately their presence and their willingness to receive will just allow them to do some work and there is basically a lot of the work that I do happens from where I sit and it will look like very fast hand movements it's almost like they're doing a surgery on like different aspects of the individual mm. and it will go through the entire room and if there is smaller groups I will even go to every individual person and do like some work there so mm. I'm mostly like completely drenched because it's so much physical aspect to it <laughs> it's not that subtle on my being at least um, and And there is a certain, you know, people report that they hear that high frequency pitch. People report that they see different forms of and the colors of light when they close their eyes. And there is, you know, various different levels of reports. Also depending on people's sensitivity and people's openness to see, right? Yeah. So that's the first aspect. And and there is a quality of silence in the space. It's really, it's really something. I believe if, that's probably my top thing, right? It's the quality of the silence, how powerful it is. Yes. And how beautiful it is. And then there will be some sort of sharing that they will do. They will often share about the times that we're in currently in humanity, human history, the importance of the individual's journey similar to the way I've spoken about it how the individual's journey is the one that impacts the entire collective if we get every individual to start doing that work wow something is gonna shift and they're also talking about how the times that we're in are not necessarily gonna get easier immediately it's gonna get even more challenging mm. And how do you face external challenges is by having an unwavering and strong core and alignment within, right? A strong body, mm -hmm. a solid heart, a clean mind, and a strong spirit, right? So this alignment will allow you to face challenges no matter what they are their emotional, spiritual, environmental, right? So this is a, they're basically saying, start to look into that. It's gonna be, this is gonna be the thing you can hold on to, mm -hmm. right? It's not something you can fix with, you know, a quick fix. This is something that needs to be nourished. It's not it's something that needs to be alchemized. Mm -hmm. right? um, and then there is an opening for potential questions that people have. So we have, uh, you know, in the, in the years I've been doing this, I've done this work everywhere around the world, in Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East. There has been a variety of questions that people have asked about everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So eventually we're going to publish books with those channelings and the answers mm. are... They're almost poetic. It's like really beautiful. There's no way I could be doing that because I have zero bone in me that's poetic. <laughs> so you get yourself into the trance state. Other people are relaxing their selves. Some are in trance, some are laying down, some are sitting. And then you begin the process of allowing the, you, by trance, you get the, the light beings come channel through you mm -hmm. into the space, make sure it's sealed, make sure that it's most conducive for the um, alignment within processes. Yes. You even, you even spend some time, um, in your seated position, but then you also stand up and go to some Correct. Of individuals. They will sometimes tell me to go to specific individuals to do some work. And because everyone is in a different place in their journey, it's different for everyone, right? For some people, it'll be more like subtle. If 
for some people it will be much bigger and for some people it's more on the physical level that's the highest priority work for some people it's on the spiritual level so and I've had many practitioners of very like long-term practitioners of different lineages that would also come to just experience something different and they would have some work done that allowed them to move faster and stronger in their journey mm-hmm. so the beautiful thing about that I pride myself with this work is that it does not require any belief system. It does not require for you to change your belief system or your methods or your lineage. Like literally anyone can come. I've had babies, a couple weeks old babies in the ceremony. I've had 90 year old people in the ceremony or in the sessions. And so it's really guided and made in a way that's fitting for every individual's current moment. And you describe this as some sort of a, even a, like a surgical process for every single one, no matter where they're at, if it's more on the physical, more on the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Let's visit, so this is happening, uh, these sessions happen every month, Sometimes every month. So depending on um, where I am at. So there will be, I'll be on tour sometimes. In Europe, I'll be on a tour in the Middle East. And depending on where I am, um, I do sessions in those particular cities. And then I come back to San Francisco and I do sessions here. Uh, Sometimes where I live in the house, it's going to be like smaller groups, you know, anywhere from 10 to 25. And then the bigger groups, 100, 200 people. Okay, and all the information on the website for mm-hmm. those for the for the tour and for where you'll be. Where does our relationship with source, God, creation, all that is, where does our relationship with that, how does that relationship interplay with free will and with determinism? Mm -hmm. So in my, in my experience, Mm, this connection to source, creator, exists all the time, as long as we're alive. It exists, in fact, everywhere around us. It permeates through everything. Um, And our consciousness is certainly tied in some way to all levels of consciousness, all the way to source. Now, we are having an experience in human form. Mm -hmm. And in this human form experience, we're allowed to do whatever we want to do, technically. So, um, and, and it won't even be judged. So, it will be what it will be. Now, everything that we choose to do has some form of effect, cause and effect, or consequence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the consequences are for us, sometimes the consequences are for other people, or the collective. And from these cause and effects and consequences, ideally we learn. And so each of these experiences, no matter how we judge them as good or bad, will have some sort of underlying learning and important lesson within. Now, sometimes it's really hard to see the lesson if you're going through a tough time, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I believe that all these lessons that are deeply buried in all of our experiences or sometimes easily accessible 
that's the ultimate reason for us to be alive. And as we experience individually, and as we experience as a collective, human consciousness grows. It grows. It expands. And we're coming to a place where human consciousness is growing so much that, according to what is told to me, <laughs> uh, what is being channeled, that humanity is coming to a time and place where it will um, move from this human form experience to a more non-material form mm. experience. Mm. Let's say to a different form of school mm -hmm. where the learnings and the teachings are different. Mm -hmm. And so this is what is what they consider as the ascension process. Mm -hmm. Now it's I think fairly different and I'm not very much in theological studies so I apologize I don't want to offend anyone with this but there is definitely some similarities in the various religions with regards to this ascension process mm -hmm. uh, but I think there is also some fairly strong distinctions in the way that is presented to me and the this transformational stage that we're in in human history is going to require everyone to do their part and it starts with this one mm -hmm. so we have free will in the ascension process Yes, we do. And if you choose not to do anything about your growth, then all the ones around you will carry you along. <laughs> but if you choose to do something about it, it'll help you, it'll help everyone else. So there is an aspect of it will make a difference if you do. And you have the option of not doing anything. It will stay with free will all the way until the end. Mm. And the outcome not already being predetermined. Correct. And the meaning of this big creation for us to artistically express, for us to ascend consciousness, I believe it's connected to human consciousness growing. So we are having individualized experiences which are incredibly rich and beautiful and full of lessons. And at the same time, a part of us that is human consciousness is also learning and growing through this entirety of all experiences. I almost see it sometimes as human consciousness having many, many experiments with every single individual, mm. right? It's running all these little life experiences and it's yes. learning from all of it yes. as a form of collective. Yes. And it's growing from all of the learnings. Yes. No matter how, you know, as strange it may seem or difficult it may seem or senseless it may seem, I believe there is an underlying um, lesson and learning with it. I like the school analogy and the lessons mm -hmm. and the collective learning that's occurring. Does it feel like the collective learning becomes more and more ascended and more and more complex until it can then act as Ouroboros and embed that initial creation code into the complexity and start the cycle again? Does it mm. feel cyclical to you? How does all that is feel to you? I think a lot of the experiences that we are going through um, are all cyclical or fractalized, right? There is like fractal experiences. In fact, your life is a full cycle and every moment is cycles. Right? And then there is the totality of a cycle. 
and so humanity is about to close its cycle on its in its physical form and of existence and then have another cycle of uh, different form of existence so yet there is an underlying current and a fabric that connects all of it to source and to the consciousness that encompasses all of existence not just human existence and the end goal of source being do you know that's a good question i don't know and there are certain questions that even in the trance state and even with higher consciousness beings speaking to me are answered as we have our hypotheses about what that looks like um, and we're not certain mm -hmm. so there are there is an aspect there's a place where even the wisdom of those that I'm communicating with comes to a place of inexplicable <laughs> uncertain maybe even incomprehensible in the form that we are in currently does that make sense mm -hmm. does it feel like the biological humanity is a bootloader for a digital super intelligence that we can then merge with interesting um I can't answer that question for certain. The way I see is that consciousness can be infused into things. As like, when somebody has lived in a specific home for a very long time, it will have that person's energy signature. Mm. It will almost have its own consciousness. Mm -hmm. And you can see that always with artistic creations as well right so I do believe and this is what's been communicated to me that we will reach a point where mm, our digital creations in will start to carry consciousness of their own mm. and they will become a sub form of a silicon based form existence and that's really fascinating to me to understand that consciousness can actually be uh, formed and created and uh, maybe even uh, siphon off and create its own existence, right? Mm -hmm. What is the role of good and evil or light and dark? Mm -hmm. Good and evil are basically our judgments on what we're seeing in the spectrum of our experiences um, life and death as well as light and dark I like light and dark better just because it doesn't carry immediate judgment mm. um, just like Sun and Moon does not carry immediate judgment and they are in this polar spectrum uh, providing a, a polarity and a duality experience and in this experience between the darkest dark and the lightest light there is all these shades of the full spectrum and you can only judge where you are based on the width of your experiences mm -hmm. right so if you had never experienced A night you wouldn't be able to understand that day is a thing it just is mm -hmm. right there is no contrast to it mm -hmm. then you don't get all the different shades from sunrise to sunset and you know the various mm -hmm. levels of uh, so polarity is an important aspect for us to learn different emotions like even happiness how could I understand happiness in contrast with the other emotions, mm -hmm. right? And so I do believe all of this creation 
with its full spectrum of dark and light is essential for us to have the full spectrum of experiences, mm. to have a rich life. Mm. Mm -hmm. It may not be a comfortable life, but it's mm -hmm. a rich life. Mm -hmm. Very rich life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the spectrum is there for us to be able to feel all of the different potential experiences. Correct. <clears throat> Do you think that this is a simulation? Hmm. Good question. I was almost expecting that one. <laughs> um, in fact, a 10-year-old boy asked that question in one of my sessions hmm. in London. Oh, interesting. Very wise kid. Um, the channel answered, and that was at that time, uh, Emmanuel, he, he answered that this life provides all the experiences that we require to have in order to learn and to grow. It is a true gift mm -hmm. with um, emotions, with uh, relationships, with the aspects of the life cycle, and with everything that we need in order to live and grow. Mm -hmm. and, and then he said, if this life feels real to you, does it matter if it's a simulation or not? If it's truly delivering all the experiences that you require to grow, and what would change if you would know if it's a simulation? How would you act and live differently if you knew? So in some ways, does it really matter? That's the, <laughs> that's the underlying uh, answer. Hmm. <laughs> it's really exciting to build the tools that enable us to poke and probe at mm -hmm. this question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And also create our own simulations of the evolution of consciousness and observe, mm -hmm. see what happens. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Life itself. Life itself. It's such a... It's such a magnificent gift that has sheer unlimited possibilities. And... And every single individual human being is go through a different life experience. Just... It's mind-blowing to believe that one could ever understand uh, all the various forms of life that exist and the experiences that exist, the spectrum, and that we potentially have had many, many lifetimes living and learning and growing. And everything that is given to us unconditionally around us like truly abundantly being provided by the Mother Earth and the Father Son and everything that the environment that we have uh, as part of our incubation place, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably the most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> What an incredible episode this has been, Asil. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Mm. Thank you. It's been an honor and a Thank pleasure. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so having much. me. Thank you so much. You are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Please share more conversations with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online about this alignment within, about this garden and about bringing our gifts most fully into the world about all of the topics that we talked about. Have more conversations about that. 
Check out the links in the bio below, asiltokasal.com. Also the Facebook page are both below. And support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations around the world that you believe in. Support them and help them grow. Support mm -hmm. Simulation. Our links are below. You can find our PayPal, our Patreon link, cryptocurrencies down there. You can design cool merch and get paid. All those links are below. And also, I would like to, I'd like to thank Staff for helping us with this show. Thank you very much for switching between cameras. We greatly appreciate it. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.